I think it's fair to say that that the Russians um, in general have not been deterred. I mean, it's not only in Africa that they're continuing to use um, social media to try to influence um, populations, to raise debates, to, to, to widen cleavages. Um, it, they're still doing it here. They're still doing it here as, we've, as we speak right now. If you look at volume one of the Mueller report, mm -hmm. which is very interesting, it's a gold mine. Manafort evidently briefed a former Russian intelligence officer on internal polling data on those four swing states. So it isn't much of a leap to say this could have had an impact. You can say some, something's a Russian asset, even if it's not intentionally trying to advance Russian interests, but because of what it does or, or what it says or, or whatever, it is in fact something that is promoting the Russian agenda. Maybe that's what she meant um, in terms of some of the things that Tulsi Gabbard has said you know, in terms of you know, on the international stage, that the United States should not be involved in a lot of these you know, foreign adventures or whatever. The problem with this, Margaret, is when you have a factual scenario, which I think we have now, that indicates that some folks, and possibly even the Attorney General, are bringing a set of preconceived notions and biases to that investigation. Um, and if that's the case, I don't know that it is, but there's certainly some indicators that it might be, um, or that the purpose of the investigation is not really to get to the bottom of what did we know and why did we make the decisions we did, but it's more to um, run out uh, theories, uh, political conspiracy theories and things of that nature, then that causes me uh, great concern, uh, not personally, but of course about the state of the department and the intelligence community that's currently under investigation.